I am going to be working on cans and meat pens. I've got a blue paper here that you can see. This is the smooth side. And this was my drawing. I left this on here because I wanted you to see what my actual drawing was. You've got a few options to get your drawing onto the paper. I don't want to draw directly on the cans and tens because you will see every eraser mark. I want my background to stay nice and clean. So even if you want a freehand, whether you want a freehand, you want to trace it directly from your computer monitor, do it on tracing paper. So let's say I want to draw something myself, but I know I'm going to do a lot of erasing. I'm going to use regular sketch paper. Draw it on that first, then trace it. So either way, you've got a tracing and then use transfer paper. I used a white transfer paper and then you use that. Once you get your drawing, you're just gonna slide that under and take a little stylus and you just trace over everything. And now I've got my line work completely clean. No eraser marks, no mess right there. The other op option is to use a digital projector. Any projector is okay. I like the digital one. It's so much more clear. So I'm gonna do the, my base layers on this with pan pastels. And that is really just going to save me a lot of time. And then I'll do the colored pencils on top of that. So if you don't have pan pastels, you can skip this and do it all with, with colored pencil. That's fine too. And all of the supplies that I'm using are linked in the video description. I am going to start, probably start with that cream color. So when I, the way that I load these, I'm just going to take my soft tool, you can see I ripped the bottom of it, but that's okay, and mix my white, a little bit of my burnt sienna. Actually, what color is that? that? Yep, burnt sienna. And I'm just mixing those right on the pan. And then coming over to the artwork, I'm just gonna go ahead and block that in. Now notice that I'm not jumping straight to white. I'm gonna save white for my brightest highlights. And I don't care if I do like right there. See how that got way too dark? I don't care, that really does not make a big difference. It doesn't have to be the exact shade going through. We can even that out after we block it in. And I don't care if it gets on the darker spots either. None of that really matters right now. And I'm also okay if the blue of my paper shows through. That actually makes my life a little bit easier because it gives me a bit of color without me having to actually do the effort. It's kind of a accidental detail or shading sort of thing. So these are all a bit darker than what I'm gonna want that end result to be, but that lets me build with the white on top of it. Oh gosh, I'm making smudges. Hold on, I need to get, I did not realize my hand was dirty when I did that. Let me grab an eraser really quick so I can remove that. What just happened here on the artwork, I had some pan pastel when I changed the cover from the last one, I had a little bit on my hand and I got some on there. This erases super easily. Now the reason that it's important that I do this now and not wait is when I come back through and spray this with Spectrafix, with the, um, fixative that I'll put on it in between layers, that would not erase very well. It might come up some, but not completely. So it is very important if you smudge your background when you want your background to stay a definite color like this, it is so important that you get that erased before you spray. So again, just gonna load that up. And I'm filling in, just focusing on the light areas for now. And like here, I wasn't super careful, went outside the line a little bit, same thing. Come back with that eraser and clean it up. Now don't use your hand to wipe away the shavings. You wanna use ideally a, do I have one over here? A drafting brush, a draft brush, drafting brush, draft something, where is it, there it is. I knew I saw this recently. Use something like that to wipe your shavings away, not your hand. You just make things worse with your hands. Plus we wanna keep our hands off the work. People, juice, not archival. We don't want the oils from our skin, no matter how well you've washed your hands. We wanna keep that off as much as possible. Now that's not to say I don't occasionally use my pinky to, to blend things out. Sometimes it's just needed. But if I can avoid it, 
there's no reason for my hand to be used. They're not benefiting anything by having my hands touch this at that point. No, this is actually easier if you turn your work as you go. Okay, now I'm gonna leave this because this is gonna, the white parts here are really in shadow. They're a darker blue, so we're not going to do that yet. Just a little bit more with the white areas. You can see how you, there's parts of this have the blue. Oh, that camera is skipping horribly. I apologize. But there are parts of this with the blue showing through. Good, leave it. That just easy shading. Okay. Now we've got this area that's really light, but it's also mostly blue. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to use phalo blue and gray. Let's see if that's too blue. I usually will go a little bit more. Oh, that's perfect. I like my blues for the shadows to be really, on giraffes, I really like pulling out the blues and the purples. I think it looks so pretty up against the oranges in the coat. So again, you that phalo blue and gray. And this has a really strong line where the shadow is. Leave it strong. That may feel scary at the time, but it will look way better in the end if you leave it that strong. I'm gonna get a little bit of black. Actually, I'm gonna mix purple in with that too. We've got this deeper shadow right in here on the inside of the ear. And we've also got some of that over here and more of the blue and gray for the shadow of this ear. Don't be afraid to really pull that color out. I usually, like I said, in giraffes, I like to make it way more extreme. I'm gonna pull more purple into that too. I like it to be even more extreme. It just makes it stand out so much by oversaturating that some. Okay, and while I've got this one out, we'll go ahead and use the raw sienna and burnt sienna, or burnt, no, red, I think that's red oxide, or red iron, red iron oxide. I'll throw some purple in there too, just point is that it's darker. We've got a shadow that comes right up the side there. Just look at your reference photo. Your reference photo has the information you need for this. So if you start looking at that and feeling lost, like I don't know what to do next, pick any spot that you see on your reference photo and just copy what, what that has. I'm not gonna do the eye with a pan, eh, maybe, I'm gonna regret this. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna do on that eye because that is going to get crazy really fast. Let's take a small brush and you can kind of smudge that out. <sighs> Too small. Okay, I need to remember next time I use that brush to clean it because now it has pan pastel on it. Totally not gonna remember. Okay. Let's go ahead, and I can use the same brush. I don't even have to clean it. This is the one that I used for the cream tones. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling in that burnt sienna. That has too much black mixed in it. Let's wipe some of that off a little bit more. Reload that. There we go. Much better. The color is actually fairly accurate tonight. That's unusual. A giraffe day miracle. Now notice that these areas, they're not super clean. I mean, I'm trying to keep them clean as much as possible, but they're not perfect. Doesn't matter, that's fine. The light colors will go on top of this really well. So don't worry about it being too dark right now. A 
load that again with the purple and blue and gray. We've got that definite shadow along the side of the face here. And then back to the raw sienna. And if on, if you're doing a giraffe, something like this, if your spots aren't exactly the same, does not matter. Unless it's like a super famous giraffe and everyone knows exactly what that looks like. No one is ever going, even then people aren't going to notice. So this is not a case where I'm worried if they're perfect. If I was doing a pet portrait, then I'm going to worry that it's exactly like that animal. The owner will know if you get those spots right, wrong, but on something like this, it's no big deal. Not something I'm concerning myself with at all, as you can tell. And I think that's, oh no, almost good enough. And we can almost switch over to colored pencil. I will spray this first with my Spectrafix. Let's get the inside of the ears a bit darker. Okay, that's probably good enough. The rest I think can be done with colored pencil. Soften that line there a little bit. Don't want anything, oh, maybe a little bit more. Let's grab some purple. I'm gonna pull a little bit of the purple and blue just under the shadow here, right down the front of the neck. Spectrafix, I put in a fine mist sprayer because if you spray sp straight out of the bottle that it comes in, you get really heavy droplets. With this, they're not as prone to that. I mean, you get some, but it's not real crazy. And I'm just lightly gonna mist over that. And then I'm gonna use the hair dryer to dry it just to speed things along. Hey, you, yes you, I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my God, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery. So let me sharpen these. That is a really dull sharpener. So if you ever, I don't know if you can see, as I'm sharpening this, it's sticking. Like see how it just keeps, I turn it and it just kind of stops. That sharpener is horribly dull. Actually, I think it got sprayed a few too many times with Spectrafix. I can probably clean it. Your sharpener should just flow smoothly. It shouldn't be sticking. So there we go. That is a much better sharpener. We've got that definite highlight right in there. And then we're going to switch over to Caput Mortem. So we move on to our shadow. I'm going to define the top of the ear. So this is where we start really cleaning things up. I'm going to go back and forth. I think that's going to be too light. We'll just keep Caput Mortem for this. Now you can use your odorless mineral spirits if you need to, if you've already sprayed it with Spectrafix. I am going to avoid doing that here just for the dry the sake of time. I don't think it'll need it anyway with having put the polychroma or the uh, pan pastels underneath. So we've got a highlight right along the edge of that ear. The light is catching. I'm just using my white for that. I'm gonna pull this out a lot brighter. 
and then pull some shading right in between there. That's the outer portion of the ear. It's gonna put mortem is great for the shading colors I need in here. And I'm gonna switch over to my purples. This is gonna have a bit of a sketchy look for a lot of this. My neighbor's dogs are barking. That's unusual. It's not unusual at all. And we're gonna come right through here. And that tip is breaking as well. That was broken inside. I wonder, huh, that's unusual too. The Derwent Light Fast, I usually don't have an issue with those breaking. The only, I really don't have an issue with any of these breaking, so it's kind of unusual when that happens. It pro, you know what may have done it? That crappy sharpener I keep using, it's causing friction where it shouldn't be, so that would actually make sense. There we go. Now I'm going to take the black for that deeper shadow and define that a bit more. Okay, now I'm going to leave that alone. I may come back and do a few more details later. We'll see, but for now that's okay. I'm going to come up and do his horns. I'm just picking one small area and working my way around. Back up here, I'm gonna start with some of the highlights. Actually, I wanna grab a little bit of a light blue, like an ultramarine. That should work. I'm going with the polychromos because I don't want it that opaque. If I go, I mean, well, I lied. I think I need a more opaque than that. But if I go with something that has a higher wax content, it's gonna be more opaque. And so it may be a bit too much, but apparently I need that here. Let's try the mid ultramarine. Yeah, that's, that's showing up a bit better for the highlight. This is very similar to the color of the paper, which works really well. Now I can come on top. I'm gonna use first my nightshade. Let's get these darker bits in. Now look how much lighter my light areas look. So you will often have where it feels like your lights aren't light enough and it's simply that your darks aren't dark enough. And I apologize, that camera is really sticking. I don't know why it does that. It's usually the most important camera that decides to do it. Let me try resetting that and see if, oh, they're not horns. Yeah, I'm never gonna remember that. Um, let me see if I can reset this if it will work better. Okay, I think that, yeah, it's, it's behaving a little bit better. Let's do that. Okay. Now with a lot of the different words, like that same thing with octopuses, I don't even know what half the parts on an octopus are called. Any of you who've watched my videos know that. We're lucky I remember that it's called an octopus. We're lucky I remember my name. Like that, that's just a problem for me. So <laughs> words are hard. But please leave in the comments, anytime you do hear me use the wrong term, absolutely correct me so people who can re remember can see your comment. And I am pushing pretty hard here, so I'm getting that burnishing look. And it looks a little bit darker on the video than what it does in person. But I know I don't need a lot of layers here, so I don't have to worry about, if you burnish, if you push hard, you damage the tooth of the paper, so you can't get a lot of layers on top of that. But here, I'm not putting that many layers, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna make sure that my pencil strokes are going about the direction of the fur. It is called fur, right? Did I get that part right at least? I'm gonna take a put mortem right over that. I'm just transitioning between that purple there and the, it looks like black, but it's actually nightshade. So it's gonna have a lot more depth than just using black would have had. Just create 
creating that texture for the fur. That one loops around. The variation in the direction of the fur is really important too. What a lot of people do and why the fur looks unnatural, it, it's not an issue of not putting enough detail. It's the detail in the wrong place going the wrong direction. Make sure you watch that shift that it constantly changes direction. We've got a shadow here. There's that little hump guy there. It's apparently not a horn. Another hump guy there. Okay, I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna leave that for right now. I'm gonna come down and work on the eye. I always do this. I jump around like that. But this is going to be my focus for just a moment here. And I'm gonna work my way out from that. Got our little eyelashes. It looks like the women with all their fake lashes lately. I said it, you heard me. I'm not sorry. Okay, and we've got that definite bright area here over his eye. I'm gonna grab a more opaque white too, because some of this I do want a bit brighter. So I wanna either go with my Karen Dosh Luminance or my Derwent Drawing, whichever one looks like it'll be, or not Derwent Drawing, Derwent uh, Light Fest. Let me sharpen that. That's gonna stick a bit better because it's got more wax in it, so it just ends up being a bit more opaque. We've got some spots I've missed in here. Oh, I never did find a burnt sienna. Let me grab that, here we go. Sharpen that. few definite spots up here. You can just watch the direction of that fur. ridiculous lashes. A few going down. And then we've got white right along that outer edge of the eye. It's not really the eye, it's part of the, the outside of his face showing. Let's pull a little highlight on that eye too. There we go. And moving down, get a little bit of shading here. And we're gonna switch back to the white. And if I need something super bright, then I'll switch over to the Derwent Lightfast. Going to do that now. I wanna really get that great contrast. But I'm not covering everything. Some of what the Pan Pastels already had, that is stained too. Like it doesn't need to be a solid white. You can see areas in here where I start, you can kind of see like right there where I start getting both of those. And I've got the mid range and the really bright white. little 
eyebrow wrinkles. And back to Burnt Sienna. I need to get some pencil extenders for these guys. They're getting pretty short. Clean up a little bit by that eye and his ridiculous lashes. Not that really ridiculous on a giraffe though. They just look weird on a human. Now, I, while I do use the black, I don't wanna jump to that for every area where I need something to be darker. If I can get something darker with a purple or a magenta, that's usually gonna be a better way to go. Now, here's another area. As I fill in these spots, I'm not trying to make them solid either. You've got areas that are a lot lighter and a lot darker. Get that variation. And watch how the spots will curve, like this area of his face completely curves this way. So we wanna make sure that when we come back and get a highlight in there, it helps give you that more three-dimensional look. And back to the white. Here I'm not really worrying about the direction of the fur. This is just a bit more solidly filled in. Watch how the curve, like here, how it curves, and then it cur sticks back out this direction. I mean, all of the, these spots, if you paint them or draw them in very flat, I mean, it makes them look flat. We want to, these are all changing shape based on the underlying bone and muscular structure. So at the same time that I say the spots don't need to be exact, I do want you to watch the way that they curve. Where is the highlight and where is the shadow? That's another thing I often see people do, where, which is a, definitely a mistake when you're, putting in your shadows and highlights. I definitely recommend hype them up, make them more extreme than what the reference photo has. That normally will look better. But what you don't wanna do is just put random shadows and highlights anywhere because where those highlights are, it's they're there because of that underlying bone and muscular structure. So when you're trying to make that look more accurate, it is important to make sure you're hitting those areas correctly. The shape of the spot, not as big of a deal, but where are those shadows and highlights? I'm pretty, I'm pushing pretty hard with that pencil at that point. I'm definitely missing some spots on that neck. Let's add some of those in. And the outer edges of these are typically going to be a bit darker than the inside of the spot. You can see it doesn't really matter if I wanna work on the spots first or the outer area with the white, you can work back and forth. So like right here, we've got this shadow on the neck. That's just because of how his muscle structure is. Definitely wanna capture that. 
I'm going to switch over to Caput Mortem for these darker spots. And actually, a lot of these will get filled in. So we've got this one here. And then we've got another one here. These are pretty dark. I'm going to do it with the Caput Mortem. I'm going to come through with the Burnt Sienna on top of that. And I'm just going to burnish. Now let's come through with the white. This, I don't really, the again, it's such short fur and with the white, you really don't see the individual fur marks. So I don't need to watch that real closely like I did up in this area. The fur's longer here, super short. So that's not a concern. I've got a highlight right here and it just connects right up there. So I'm just gonna go right over both of those. And then a little bit inside here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use, let's start with Ross Sienna, or not Ross Sienna, Burnt Sienna. His mane, is it a mane? Did I get that wrong? His mohawk. And this is another area, notice that the lines are slightly curved, they're not just perfectly straight. Usually things in nature are not gonna be super, super straight, it ends up looking kind of weird if they are. Super straight is going to be more like a man made a building, a fence, that sort of thing. A little bit sparse in there. Let's fill that out. You get some real gain. Let's thicken that up. So there are some highlights. Let's get some darker shadows I'm using the Caput Mortem right at the base there. I'm gonna pull some of that cup of mortem into a few of these spots as well. So get some shading. He's coming out really good already. I'm super happy with him. Long project, longer than usual for the live streams, but he's coming out good. Okay, I'm gonna get some brighter highlights by using the white Derwent drawing. This really shows you the difference between, I keep saying Derwent drawing, Derwent Lightfast, the difference between the Derwent Lightfast opacity white and the Polychromos. The Polychromos works, it just doesn't get this white. So it just depends on what you're going for, which pencil you want to use for that. So for my brighter whites that I'm burnishing against, I'm pushing pretty hard. I go over the spots too to lighten those up. It's a little too light. Let's go back over that. Just a bit. I got a little crazy. Okay. Slide this over to the side now. It looks like I've got a little bit of a smudge in here. Erase that. Okay, good. It is the main. I feel like being ridiculous and asking if everything's everything now. Is this the ear? Did I get that one right? Let's get that white right around the edge. And I have to still come back and do the whole face, uh, the rest of the face, but we'll start with this. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Let that high contrast on that shadow, that definite ear shadow, leave that in there. I'm gonna use some of the blue in the center. This is the mid ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna go over to my purples. Actually, where's my Caput Mortem? Let's define some stuff in here. We've got, you need to curve down. And I'm gonna use purple right along that shadowed edge. right along this edge. I'm 
And I'm gonna switch over to the Caput Mortem for the inner shadow here. And you may be thinking, well, I, do, I don't have that color. What do I use instead? Anything close, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to use the exact colors. The thing that we're concerned about here are our values. Are our darks dark enough? Are lights light enough? That's what's gonna make a difference. So really watch where those shadows are. Like I said, it doesn't matter so much that the color is perfect. Are your values, are your darks dark enough, your lights light enough? That's really what we wanna watch for. And I'm gonna do the little tufts of hair just by putting the dark going back in between. Let's pull the definite dark out here. using the blue to get some of these lighter areas back in versus white, because the white would be too bright there, being that this in shadow is in shadow, that ultramarine blue is a much better choice. Same thing for some of these little wisps of fur. Now I want that to be even more of a stark contrast. Right along this edge, I'm gonna take my violet, which is just a dark purple. It's like a purple dioxazine. Get that edge and I'm gonna pull that down just a bit and then I'm gonna burnish over it with my ultramarine so that it won't be that bright, but it'll also, I, I definitely want this a bit darker than the rest of that that's in there. So I'm gonna push pretty hard. We're gonna burnish that. When you burnish, the, we often talk about don't burnish, it'll, it makes it so you can't get as many layers. Yeah, but if you do it at the right time, burnishing is a great technique. It gives you that very painterly look that you also can get with using odorless mineral spirits without the dry time of the odorless mineral spirits. So you just want it, burnishing is fine as long as you save it to where you know it's getting into your last layers. I'm gonna use that blue to blend that again by burnishing, so I'm pushing pretty hard. So I've actually got a little bit of a weird line over here I've gotta fix. This comes down that way. So now I need, I'm gonna actually use my white to lighten some of that. There we go. And then the white again, this is the Derwent Lightfast, so it's more opaque. A little bit more in there. Whoopsie, now that was too white, so I can go on top of that again with the blue. Just tone that down a little bit. There we go. And when you're zoomed in this close, you often, it looks wrong. It's like, oh, that's too much contrast. But when you look at it as a whole, you back away, then it all comes together. So trust your reference photo. Copy what you see there. Okay, now on to the rest of his face. So let's start with this really dark, actually, let's start with this eye. using nightshade here, it looks just as dark as black. And there's lashes. And then I'm gonna take a pump mortem right around the edge of this eye where the color is. A lot of this is gonna be blue and purple in here. Okay, let's get the spots I'm gonna mostly do with the Capit Mortem for now, and then I'll come back through with purple over the darker areas. Actually, purple might be easier. Let me grab you. Yeah, that'll be better for the dark areas first. Let's map those out. And this purple's just a really dark magenta. If I named this, it would be magenta. But then there are like, any reddish purple color, I call magenta. 
So there would be a lot of magentas in every set. I guess it could get confusing. We've got his eyebrow wrinkles. And a definite highlight right along this edge. I'm gonna use for now my polychromos white so it's not too opaque, but I definitely need to lighten this up. Now, I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but one of the things I do constantly as I'm working, constantly squinting at it, and it's not just because I'm blind. It's because I'm trying to look at what, it shows me my highlights and my shadows without focusing on the details. So it really lets me know if something is just completely standing out that shouldn't. Because sometimes we get caught, when we look this close at something, we're caught up on the details. We're, we're noticing the little details. But when you squint at it, you don't see those details anymore. You're seeing, it's the same as looking at it from across the room. You see everything as a whole a lot better. And it's something that I do continuously as I'm working. I don't, you don't even realize you're doing it at that, like you, it, when you get to where you've done it so many times. I'm gonna push pretty hard here on that nostril. Just doing that with purple. And then here's another example. Is purple the right color to do that nostril with? Doesn't matter. Is it dark enough? That's what matters right now. That is, makes a, a way bigger deal. Now the difference is where I've got a highlight on this side because it's in shadow, I'll use the light blue. And then on the other side, I would switch over to the white. I'm gonna use that same purple, start building up where we've got these little dips in his snoot. I know that's a proper term. You're not gonna catch me on that one. It is a snoot. We've gotta start creating the shape of these nostrils here. And this is another area where the fur is super short. Don't try to paint, especially when you're working this small, we're not gonna focus on getting every little strand of fur. Now let's say you're doing a huge 30 by 40 inch piece. You're gonna focus on every strand of fur. This wouldn't look right. And even then you don't need to. I mean, it just depends on the, the style you're going for. But on something this size, it, we're really focusing on where are our lights and darks. That's what's going to make a difference. Now here, the fur gets a little longer. So we'll get the hint of some of the fur, the direction of the fur. The direction of the fur, the direction of the fur. I can talk, really. I can't. That was a dirty lie. So we've got to start building these shadows. We've got a definite shadow that just kind of comes down right down here, mostly down to the eye. And then this is a pretty harsh shape. I'm gonna switch over to the violet. Get more of a purple purple in there, right along that edge. And we've got a shadow on the knot horn.
and I also need to get a better transition. Like right now we've got this straight line. We don't really need that straight of a line there. Let's break that up by pulling a few bits of fur in here. I'll also pull a little bit of blue right along that edge. That gives me a really good transition. Okay, let's get some more highlights. And I'll pull blue over some of these highlights too. And before we finish this up, just a quick reminder, if you are interested in more lessons, I have over 300 available over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Right now, you can still sign up for as little as $4 a month. In a couple of months, I am going to be upping that by a dollar or two per tier, depending on the tier. If you sign up now, or if you're already signed up, you're locked in at the rate you currently signed up as long as you're signed up at that rate. If you were to cancel and come back, then it will, would be, it would default you to the new rates. So if you are looking, if you've been considering and you want to get in at that lower rate, do it now because in a month, month and a half, two months, something like that, I've got to, I've got to actually set it up, but I'm going to um, have to upgrade that because I have not raised my prices since two, I set it up in 2014. So it is time. Inflation is a killer and I have to pay my bills and it's getting to be a challenge. So that is definitely going to be happening soon. But if you are already a member, you will be grandfathered in at the same, your current price will not change. It's just that you wouldn't be able to sign in at that price. So little, little thing. And there are over 300 lessons available. If you go to lockcree.com, you can look at the student video library and see everything in multiple mediums that I have available. So much content, new content every week. Sometimes I'm late but I make up for it. So head over lawcree.com or patreon.com slash No, Patreon is actually not for US residents only. It's for everywhere. I mean, even the higher tiers where you get cards, mini prints or stickers or whatever tier you, you choose, you still get your rewards sent to you on those tiers. Back to the highlights. So I'm starting again with my polychromos because it's not as opaque. And this is a darker area. And I'm just gonna lightly go over all of this. Same thing where I wanna highlight over here. I'm just not pushing super hard. Here though, the light is catching on this little nostril. We're gonna push harder there. Giraffe lips. And he's got his little whiskers. I'm going to use the nightshade for that. Make sure that's nice and sharpened though. Also, if you do sign up to Patreon, make sure to check that there's a Discord link. Click that, you can join our chat. And we, we chat about everything, a lot with our pets art tips if somebody needed help from someone there's other artists in there that can give you advice so it's been we've been having fun lots of lots of rambling about just random stuff too so it's just fun we've got our little whiskers just some little short guys watch the direction of these and don't go overboard we don't want to make it look like the current style of ladies ridiculous eyebrows or not eyebrows those two um eyelashes Some little whiskers. More shading over here. Now this is the stage where most everything's in. So we start correcting values like this. There's something weird going up here on up here. We definitely need to correct. So let's get some detailing in there. Obviously missing a few spots. And I need to pull more of the shadows down farther and then come back on top with the blue for the highlights of some of this. Let's switch over to the purple, which is really magenta as far as I'm concerned. I feel like I should write to Derwent and complain. Oh, well, I'd have to write to every company because lots of companies call magenta purple and it breaks my brain. Some missing spots in there. Oh, 
Okay, that looks like too straight of a line, even though there is a shadow coming out. I need to break that up. That is just a hot mess. I mean, I was planning to come through with highlights, but that was a bit extreme, even for my plan. There we go. Much better. Using the white just for a few highlights in there. This is always the funnest part to me on, the, on a piece because this is where everything starts really coming together. It doesn't look like a lot is happening, but it starts just bringing everything together with these little details, little correction in shading, correction, corrections, multiple. Definitely need some more highlights in here. These spots need to be a bit brighter. See, a lot of this, I'm just blending with the white. If I don't push too hard, the white works as a really good blender. You could also use a colorless blender too. Actually, that's not a bad idea. The problem with that is figuring out where I put mine. So let's try with a Caran d'Ache. They have, this one is their full blender bright. And so this is basically just the unpigmented colored pencil. So you can burnish. Oh, it looks good. Oh my gosh. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. I'm a sad, sad person. Yes, that is what gives me goosebumps. But, oh, that's blending so pretty. I don't always like the colorless blenders. It's actually like, I hate to say it, but I like Prismacolor's colorless blenders actually pretty good. Um, but I don't burnish enough that, like I would normally just blend with OMS. And I'm just trying to avoid it because the whole dry time and all that, but oh, this is gorgeous on this paper. It looks like somebody just made it into our Patreon Discord channel. That's what that notification was. I'm just going over all of this and I'm getting rid of a lot of the grainy gritty look, which I don't hate on this because I'm going for a more sketchy look, but oh, this is just giving me such pretty time. Ooh, we've got to get a lot of purple down that neck. That is something I am definitely missing still. So now that that's in, let's come on there. This is actually the violet that I'm calling purple. And we'll come back through with some purple too that they, that I call magenta, that they call purple. So confusing. Why you gotta confuse me with your colors? So there's the more magenta color right on the edge there. Pull more of that, per actually, yeah, let's do more of the purple, right along that. And I used to, when I, I first started with colored pencils, everything was done with burnishing and the colorless blender. The reason that I don't do it more, I actually think that it produces beautiful, obviously it produces great results. The reason that I don't do it more is it's harder on my hands. You have to push a lot harder. I have arthritis in my hands. I have since I was a teenager. So that is a problem for me. That's why I typically will go with the odorless mineral spirits. But you, let's say you're traveling, you're working in a sketchbook. These colorless blenders, I would definitely pick some up. This one is the Caran d'Ache. Derwent has some. I don't love the Derwent ones very much. They're, I mean, they're okay. They're usable. But I, but see, it depends on the color you're using in the paper because you switch papers and I suddenly hate this. So that makes a difference too. But um, I would definitely recommend giving them a try. They make the ones that come in a marker form. I know Prismacolor used to make one. I think some other ones do. It's like an alcohol-based marker for blending. I don't recommend those. They're 
horribly expensive and they do not last long. You are not going to get very much blending done with one of those markers. It is so overpriced for what you would get with like just using odor, uh, miner, words, odorless mineral spirits, um, like Gamsol or Mona Lisa odorless. Those, it just doesn't make any sense financially to use those markers are so expensive, but the colorless blenders, those ones are not as expensive. And if you are traveling and you want something that you can just blend little areas really quick, if you're okay with burnishing that area of your piece, then these are a great way to go. I'm really happy with the results I'm getting with that. Okay. I just turn into an advertisement for colorless blenders. Random. Random only because I don't use them that often. Blend that. This works better. I've used the Caran d'Ache one before and it was okay. I wasn't super impressed with it. I'm liking it. I don't know if it's the Canson Me 10s or the fact that I've got so much of the Derwent Light Fast on here, but it is really working better than I remember it being in the past. Or maybe it's that I've got pan pastels under it. It might just really like the pan pastels. That is a possibility. Let's get some more burnt sienna. Let's get some more rich colors in here. Darken the snoot. As always, I reserve the right tomorrow with fresh eyes to come and make a few minor details if needed. It may not need it. it is, a lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times I come in with fresh eyes and I love it even more than I did the night before. But sometimes when you're sitting here for so long, your eyes are not getting a break. Then you may just notice something the next day. Go to mat it and then see, ooh, that needs adjustments. Okay. Um, let me see if that gets me the highlights I want. Kinda. Yeah, actually it does. So I'm using my ultramarine, my mid ultramarine to get some highlights here. And this color is working so well because it is so similar to the color of the paper. So I'm really liking those results. Almost done. Let's see. Got some spots that are a little missing. So we have you. You need to come up further. And then there was another one that is just apparently I decided not to draw. Let's throw you in there. And then this is the the last thing that I really want to do is make sure I've got some variation along the edges of these spots so that the spots aren't just one color. Get that in there. Yeah, he, I am really happy with him. He came out really cute. I'm gonna define that a little bit more by pulling some nightshade. And I'm just gonna pull that up to define, separate the ear from the head a bit. And then I'm gonna go back to that colorless blender that I'm currently in love with. My Gosh, this is working amazingly well. Use it to figure out where the signature goes. So he'll be positioned about like that. And I don't want the signature right under his snoot. I think that that draws weird attention away from him. So I'm gonna sign right over here. You want to remember with your signature, it, you want to be able to see it. I know some people will sign the back of the canvas. No, that's no, sign, sign the artwork, but make sure it's not such a focal point. Like you can put your signature in a way that it completely draws attention to the wrong area or draws the viewer off the canvas. You don't want that. I mean, there's sometimes when I do marine life where it's above and underwater, I'll sign right at the water line works really well. So you can sign in different locations of the painting, but make sure it's not distracting. Cause could you imagine the signature right? Like, like he's nomin on the signature, I guess. I don't know. I guess I could have drawn grass blades coming out of it.
But watch for that. The other reason that I, I held the mat up is because if I didn't, I probably would have signed down here. Then when the mat got put on, it would have cut that off. So those are things that you just want to keep in mind.